Hi everyone, it's Chenzo from Reality Art Pod. I'm here to talk about Big Brother UK 2023, day 21 through 24, and the fourth surprise eviction. Obviously, we're used to the schedule of them doing evictions on Fridays, but as you know, I do my recaps when an eviction happens, so don't forget to subscribe because they happen whenever. So we pick up where we left off. Hallie has just been evicted. Dylan and Olivia thought it would be Dylan evicted, and so did I. Olivia and Carrie speculate about Hallie's eviction. Olivia brings up that some people could have voted Hallie out, out of hate for trans people. Chanel says that she doesn't think people vote like that. Trish celebrates in the diary room that she's still there. She feels validated, liked, and loved. Later on, Junkin is annoyed that Olivia said that people may have voted Hallie out out of hate. I actually don't think what Olivia said was too wrong. There are people out there, especially right now, who are especially prejudiced and hateful against trans people, and the fact that they're trying to shut down and invalidate what Olivia says comes actually across as a bit ignorant to reality to me. Carrie is sad that her friend Hallie is gone, and she cries about it, and I think that their friendship was sweet. Jordan says to Henry that he's not attracted to Maddie at all, which is a real quick change of narrative to me. Then Henry and Jordan call Maddie's open relationship a load of baloney that won't work. Y'all are so fake talking about your friend like this. They wake up the next day to laser sounds. Jenkin and Tom say that they were hoping that Dylan went home too, and they all call him an asshole, and I agree. Dylan goes to the diary room and is again going on and on about the food and how much everyone should be eating. Yinrin tells Trish that she feels like her conversations with Naki are surface level, while Naki is standing right there behind them. Jordan and Henry go behind the couch and flirt, which I'm beginning to question if it's all for TV since they're so calculated about what the public think. Big Brother tells them they'll be using BB's venting machine, where they pay in venting. This seems very ripped off from another BB series. I've seen this before for sure. Maybe it's Australia. Wherever I saw it last was definitely more entertaining than this. Of course, Carrie screams into the machine and it's funny. Olivia screams about the toilet seat. Naki says, how about we stop screaming? And then Dylan starts off calmly, but eventually has a near nervous breakdown conniption venting about the cooking. Naki doesn't raise her voice and gets nothing. The yelling really gets old because they're just making up issues to yell about. Jordan ends up making them laugh by coming out of his shell and winning some loose soda. Olivia and Paul put crushed up lettuce on Carrie in bed and turn her into a salad. She is now a little bit pissed off. Trish says that Paul is sexy so he gets away with a lot of his bad behavior in the house, including putting lettuce on the Carrie salad. Later on, outside with Jenkin and Paul, Olivia says that she feels like she has a responsibility to be Carrie's friend, really treating Carrie like a burden. Anytime it's a combination of of Olivia, Paul, Tom, Jenkin, there's always a negative conversation happening. The house guests play a game of throwing a cork around in the living room, and in the diary room, Maddie says that Olivia is only mildly funny and very loud. At night, Olivia, Tom, Paul, and Naki have a loud pillow fight in the bedroom that wakes everyone up and sends Dylan to the diary room to complain to Big Brother. The next day, it's getting spooky in the Big Brother house because Halloween is approaching and I'm very excited about this. In the morning, Dylan complains again about not being able to sleep and calls the disturbance group the Riot Lot. Olivia and Jenkin agree that Dylan just wants to win at all costs. For the spooky challenge this week, the housemates are being sent to hell by evil Big Brother to do a scary Halloween task, which I love. They summon spirits on their Ouija board, and the spirit of Farida is first. The ghost of Farida shows up and says that someone is manipulating the younger housemates who are following them like sheep. Who TF is she talking about? Is it Carrie? The ghost of Zack says it's the quiet ones they should be afraid of. Once again, no idea of who or what he's talking about. Then the ghost of Hallie comes and Carrie gets emotional. She says somebody is very two-faced. This was kind of fun, but could have been a lot more fun if they gave actual tea. Later on, Evil Big Brother asks for a volunteer to come to the diary room and Naki volunteers to go, so Big Brother tells her that she is now possessed and needs to pick someone to be possessed with her, and she recruits Trish to join her mission. Near the kitchen sink, Olivia seemingly scolds Yinrin, saying that she was washing dishes improperly. Yinrin is confused because she was just minding her own business. Olivia later apologizes to Yinrin. Shortly after, Carrie comes to the diary room and cries and screams about what Farida said about her. In the dead of night, Naki and Trish sneak to the Halloween dungeon. They see cards with everyone's faces on them and evil big brother tells them that they have to choose three housemates to receive a cursed nomination and face eviction which is taking place later that night this was fun and i liked this mostly because i like trisha naki so i'm definitely happy that the power didn't get into the wrong hands they decide to each individually pick one nomination and then come up with a third nomination that they both agree with Trish nominates Olivia because she doesn't behave when she's around Paul, and she shouted at Yinren about the plates. Naki nominates Dylan because he takes certain topics too far, and he's kind of an asshole. And they both decide to nominate Carrie pretty much because the public has been chanting her name, which doesn't seem very fair to Carrie, but okay. They return to the house and get back in bed. The next day, Big Brother wakes them up with spooky music, and Olivia says, thank you for that spectacle. Jordan says that he noticed that Trish had gotten up in the middle of the night, and she says that she was off comforting someone. I was really nervous watching this because Big Brother said they would have penalties if they got caught 
caught and they kind of did get caught. Big Brother provides them with Halloween costumes and Henry is upset that he's a pumpkin and everyone else is an ethereal dark character. In the diary room, Naki says she feels evil today and she knows that if and when it gets revealed, it's going to cause a lot of chaos. Jordan and Henry again discuss Trish and Naki sneaking out in the middle of the night and it seems like they're really not buying their story. Yinrin is really leaning into being a scary clown and it's hilarious, complete with her doing a giant smile and magic tricks. Yinrin, Tom, and Jenkin have to keep their hands on a table while Evil Big Brother tries to scare them. A scary evil clown comes in and scares them as Yinrin whimpers. Vampire Jordan and Witch Chanel have to bob for fish in the fish guts. Credit to Chanel who really dove into the fish guts. The least entertaining task of the day is Paul, Trish, Maddie, Henry, and Naki having to feel around in boxes with creepy things in them and find numbers in the boxes. The objects in the boxes are a stuffed animal, a mop, yarn, and a human hand. They end up getting their numbers wrong, and them losing this round upsets Dylan. He feels like they're going to lose the luxury shopping budget now. And one thing about Dylan is he is going to lose his shit over the shopping budget. Finally, Dylan, Carrie, and Olivia get pulled, and Evil Big Brother tells them that Naki and Trish were the possessed housemates, and that they nominated them, and that the public had been voting to evict this whole time, and that the fourth housemate evicted is Carrie, and she has to leave through a coffin. So Carrie leaves having a really cool exit, probably one of the coolest exits in Big Brother history. So I'll talk more about that in a second, but for now, Olivia and Dylan are pissed. The second they come back into the house, Dylan is raging. He says that he's shocked that the only other two black house guests in the house nominated him. So they start fighting, and Trish says he's acting like a bitch, and Dylan calls her a two-faced lying pussy. Oh my god. I truly cannot believe the things that they were saying to each other. Also, I love fights on reality television, but one thing I hate is when two people are fighting, and other people are trying to get in the middle of it and saying, stop, stop, stop. Mind your own business, you are literally interjecting your body into the middle of someone else's business. After they separate, Dylan has a diary where he makes more of an ass of himself talking about Trish and Naki. Olivia is more upset that Naki nominated her and then got back in bed with her. Later, Naki and Trish hold a house meeting to clarify that Olivia's nomination was Trish's idea. Then, at this meeting, Dylan and Trish start fighting again, and later, Paul, Olivia, and Dylan think that the whole house meeting was a lie, and it wasn't. So, these people just further and further make themselves look really terrible. At the end of the night, we end off on a positive note. Trish tells Naki that she's proud of her, and Olivia gets back into bed with Naki. So that's the rundown from the last few days. We do have to say goodbye to Carrie, unfortunately, and I've come a long way on Carrie. In the first week, I made it no secret that I felt like the public got it wrong and evicted the wrong person. I think Carrie should have gone home the first eviction, mostly because she was picking on Farida and Farida was more entertaining than Carrie. However, since that eviction, Carrie has been hilarious. The drama and the performative meltdowns, it really was a part of the episode that I looked forward to every day. So yeah, like I said earlier, the biggest negatives were that she was a bit of a bully at times, but some of the positives were she did have a really sweet side. It was nice seeing her friendship with Hallie develop, and she did seem to have a good sense of humor and not take herself too seriously. I also feel like there's just a lot of subtle physical comedy in her facial expressions and body language. Part of me feels like it was too soon to lose Carrie at this point, but another part of me feels like it's just the perfect time to build the rest of the storylines that are bubbling up in the house. Like, I really don't think there was a place for Carrie and all of the things that are about to be happening. So, as much as I wanted Dylan to go home this week, I feel like I could use another few days of him making a complete fool and ass of himself before he gets evicted next. Anyway, that's kind of all I have to say about this eviction. I think I've made it quite clear that I want Dylan to go next. Let me know in the comments who do you want to be evicted next week, or I guess Friday. Like I said, don't forget to subscribe because I'm posting my next video whenever the next eviction happens. And to my friends across the pond, good morning. Have a nice day. Bye.